Hey guys, we're back with another weekly training summary, the Olympia edition. Hope you enjoyed that intro. That was pretty lulls worthy. Um, thought Dennis definitely stole the show <laughs> with that, uh, even the Olympia announcement. So, with that said, here's the week in, in training. I know I'm a week late on this, but better late than never. Um, so, training was a little weird because we had to uh, go to the Olympia. So, this is Monday's training right here. This was. Um, and we were heading to Olympia the, on Tuesday, so I was trying to get a lot of stuff in. So I figured I'd take some GoPro footage for you guys. Um, I don't know how many of you guys like this or if you care, um, but I thought it might be cool to give you guys kind of a first-person perspective of what I see when I squat, and maybe it'll help you with kind of how I set up and those sorts of things. So this day was, we're still kind of, I wouldn't say this is a taper, but it, it's still kind of taking it a little bit easy, given my... Give my body a little bit of chance to recover. I felt like I ne still never even recovered after Raw Nationals at, and going in straight to that volume training block. Uh, I got some good volume work in, but, um, you know, kind of got beat up a little bit. So uh, this is, uh, I did three sets of nine with 435 on squat, and they went relatively smooth, so I was happy with that. Uh, feel free to uh, make, you know, nasty comments and and uh, and put the jokes in, I'm sure. There'll be a wa everybody will be putting the timestamp in and saying, "Wow, what a bulge!" or whatever you you want to say. So yeah, I, I figured I'd get static on that, but hey, whatever. Uh, <laughs> so sorry, Paul. Um, you're probably going to get some some static. Uh, and then bench press went pretty well, as you guys know. I'm dealing with a bit of a pec strain, uh, so this was three sets of eight with 250, pretty easy weight, uh, but it was feeling good. So I felt you know, encouraged about that, that it was feeling good because, um, it's, I could still feel it, but it, it was actually starting to feel like I could throw the weight a little bit. And, uh, deadlifts actually, I've been kind of in the groove on, uh, I feel like, um, haven't been hitting any PRs, but the same weight just feels smoother. So I'm pretty happy about that. Um, feels like one fluid motion. Whereas, you know, six months ago it was feeling like, you know, separate lifts. So this day of training was um, three sets of seven with 495 on deadlift. It was supposed to be 490, but sorry, Ben, I'm doing 495. So, um, and actually, cool thing, I'm uh, down another notch on my belt. Um, I continue to somehow get leaner uh, eating more calories and reverse dieting. Um, now lifting heavy ass weight and with a lot of volume probably has something to do with that too. <laughs> uh, but I'm happy. I mean, I'm, I'm like two Oh five right now. So I am lifting at my competition weight. So I feel like that's going to be an advantage for me. Um, is that I don't have to cut to make two Oh five. Now I'm just comfortably at this weight. I have plenty of energy. I, you know, eating plenty. I'm eating over 400 grams of carbs in my training days. Um, yeah, I got some Go GoPro footage on this third set, and uh, so I, I turned it around so you guys could uh, see me in the mirror. Uh, so that'll be after this set's done. Um, so yeah, I, I feel good, uh, but you know, training's been tough. And uh, to be honest with you, um, you know, I follow all the guys from Raw Nationals, uh, you know, the top five guys, uh, you know, because they're really cool. We got along really well, and it was fun. But it can be dis dis discouraging sometimes because I see them hitting PRs and I've kind of, you know, haven't been able to test. I've had some injuries here and there. And, um, so you know, even I'm prone to, to kind of second guessing myself, those sorts of things. And, um, so I kind of had a, 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 a I don't want to say a come to Jesus moment, but you know, a, a, not an epi you know, an epiphany of sorts, um, in that. I kind of realized, you know, this is a sport where you, it's like bodybuilding, it's like golf. Uh, you can't stop your opponents from what they're going to do. Okay. They're going to do what they're going to do. And so all I can focus on is I'm going to work on hitting my PRs. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And if somebody can beat me, then you know what? It, tip of the cap. It, it is what it is. You know, um, I can't waste time worrying about what everybody else is going to do. I just got to focus on what I'm going to do. And if I do what I'm going to, I can, I know I'm capable of, um, I'm confident that I can always be in the mix. So, uh, that's my mentality is I'm going to take care of my business. I'm going to hit my numbers in training. Uh, I'm going to dominate my lifts 
and then we'll see what happens. So uh, one thing I want to emphasize here, notice how my head position is neutral. I don't throw my head up. You hear a lot of people say, oh, you know, throw your head back, throw your head back. That's not what you want to do. Same thing on squats. You, you don't want to throw your head back. It's going to throw your spine out of alignment. It's going to make for an uneven, uneven bar path. Shout out to Ben Escrow on that one. So that was Monday's training. This is Wednesday. So now we're in Vegas. Uh, we worked out at a place called Tap Your Fitness uh, in Vegas, which is a, a USAPL approved uh, training center. Uh, it's very funny when we walked in. So Paul is so used to me getting recognized everywhere um, that he it kind of throws him for a loop when I don't. So I'm sorry, before I get into that story, this is uh, 465 for four sets of seven. And felt relatively good with these uh, today. So anyway, we walk into the gym, and uh, Paul's always just used to be getting recognized. Um, and, you know, that's cool. Um, it, it is really cool. But, uh, you know, I don't expect everybody to know who I am, and I know there's a lot of people who don't know who I am, and that's that's cool. Totally fine. Um, and so, Paul, <laughs> we're, we're in the gym Get, getting in and, and, and Paul's like, yeah, we want to, we want to, we'd like to work out here. We heard it's a good gym, et cetera, et cetera. And they're like, oh, great, great, great. And uh, he's like, yeah, this is my friend Lane. And like, oh, great. Nice to meet you. He's like, Lane Norton. And it, it kind of gives a blank stare. And he's like, 93 kilo raw national champion Lane Norton. <laughs> and then it was just like blank stares. So, but it was pretty funny. You know, I got a kick out of it. Um, you know, he's all, like I said, he, I guess he was, uh, some of the, his favorite stories is he was at, you know, Paul's my training partner. So we're together all the time and he's one of my best friends and, uh, he's get gotten to see, he, we've been friends since like 2009 and, uh, we, he was a client of mine in 2008 and, you know, so he's known me for, for six years. And so he's gotten, kind of gotten to see the, you know, the rise in popularity and those sorts of things. And so, um, it's kind of interesting. So he, uh, he, he told me like when he when he knew you know things were getting bigger was he was in Chipotle and uh, the guy at Chipotle making his burrito was like oh man do you work out and Paul's like yeah 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 and his uh, the guy making his burrito was like well do, do you ever you know, read this guy's articles Lane Norton and Paul's like oh yeah he's a friend of mine he's at my wedding and the guy started freaking out on him that I was uh, in his wedding so it was uh, it's pretty funny and then I guess his uh, his movers knew who I was when he was moving from Jacksonville to Tampa. Um, so that was, so that he just, he, he like rolls his eyes and it's pretty funny. Um, and then, uh, he also, uh, we were working out in the gym one time in Jacksonville and, uh, this guy was deadlifting there and, uh, I went over to him. We were using a, a good bar and he kind of had a crappy bar and I said, Hey, you know, if you'd like to work in with us, you're welcome to. And he was like, Oh no, no, it's cool. And he just kept on doing his workout and we did our workout and Paul was like, ha, see, somebody who doesn't know you. And I was like, hey, man, it happens, you know. Um, and then later later that evening, I got a Facebook message from the guy. And he was like, oh, man, I can't believe I just worked out in the same gym as Lane Norton. <laughs> and so I said that to Paul. And Paul's like, you know, Paul's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, but those, are, those were pretty funny stories. But uh, Vegas was fun, you know. So this is Wednesday. Um, I had... We had, we did squat, bench, deadlift, all three lifts, um, and you're gonna see we kind of had to pack everything in because Friday like the Olympia is fun for me, but people don't realize it's work. I mean, I'm I'm working, I'm there to work. So like my work started Wednesday in a way. I mean, it was fun, but we went out for this night. We went out for a, a, the Team Norton dinner. So every year, uh, my clients and then like my best friends out in Vegas, we arrange a dinner. And uh, that was a ton of fun, but you know we we're out a little late, which for me is like ten thirty. <laughs> um, and uh, and then Thursday, uh, that night we had the MyOatmeal.com dinner at Fogo de Chao, which was awesome. I had a great time. Uh, Anthony Colova, who owns uh, MyOatmeal.com, is a great guy. Uh, did a fantastic job, and congratulations to him and uh, his new fiance. Um, they're awesome people. We loved hanging out with them. And uh, there was other, you know, great people there. There was uh, Chris Lovato and, and Matt Ogus and um, Honey and Megan. A lot of people from USAPL. Like it was, a, it was just a great time. Um, we had a, we had a really good time. And obviously, like free Fogo de Chao is is not a terrible thing. <laughs> so shout out to Anthony for that. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate your sponsorship and appreciate your support. Um, so yeah, if you've never been to myoatmeal.com, shameless plug. Go check them out. If you like oatmeal. Um, 
this is an awesome site for you guys to check out. So 22 billion combinations that you can do. Um, it's crazy. So anyway, we had that Thursday night and then Friday morning at, you know, 8 a.m. or 8.30 a.m. I got to be over to the expo to get all my passes and all that sort of stuff sorted out. And um, a quick comment on these bench press sessions. They, they went pretty good. It was 285 for four sets of eight and uh, starting to feel okay. I'm sorry. It was, I'm sorry, 285 for uh, six sets of four or five sets of four. Oh, my mind. Um, so I had to get there early, get our, get my passes, all that kind of stuff. And then I were, I did a, I had to go over to the pros this booth for an hour, did an interview with them. They're a, they're a distributor. And then I worked at the Lone Star booth for an hour and a half, uh, meeting and greeting. You're going to see some of that footage. And then I worked at the quest booth for the next three hours after, well, I went and got lunch and then worked at the quest booth for three hours, which was great. Uh, quest is awesome. Um, they had a ridiculous booth and uh, met a ton of people and uh, just everybody working for that company is just really good people, really enjoyed uh, hanging around them. And also some of the, uh, the YouTubers, <laughs> the fitness YouTubers that were there who were really cool people. So um, I got to, got to see uh, Chelsea and I met uh, Max Chewing uh, very briefly. Uh, nice guys. Um, so that that was cool. But again, you know, that's – and then the expo. So I'm there at, you know, 8.30. Expo finishes up at 5. And then as soon as the expo was done, I had to dr drive to the Orleans, you know, because the expo is at the convention center. Um, well, actually, after the expo, I had a meeting with Bible.com. Then had to drive to the Orleans and then worked there live tweeting and uh, updating the show from like 7 p.m. till midnight. And then Saturday got up and did the whole thing over again. So, you know, it, it's just it, it can give it to be a grind. So that doesn't leave a whole lot of room for training. So as you're going to see, I did squat bench deadlift two days in a row. Uh, Wednesday and Thursday. So this is Wednesday's workout. And then tomorrow I'm going to do the exact same thing over, except I'm doing uh, AMRAPs on last sets of squats and, bit, and deadlifts on Thursday. So it was pretty interesting. But, um, you know, I had to get my volume in. I knew there was no way I was going to be able to uh, train on on Friday and Saturday. And then Sunday we had a, uh, a day camp scheduled um, with, uh, you know, myself, Paul, and Diana Dahlgren, who's a good friend of ours. Uh, we're, we're running a day camp in Vegas and I, I probably do some training, but I knew I probably wouldn't be able to get, you know, all my volume and AMRAPs and that sort of thing. So, uh, just did what I could really, um, just did what I had to do, uh, did these two days of volume. So this is, uh, 525. Wait. Yeah. Five, it looks like 525 for, uh, four sets of five. I think it was. Um, felt relatively smooth, pretty good. Um, I was happy with it. There was a little bit of problem with that, with that platform. Um, not for Paul cause he's conventional, but where I, he was doing, uh, three sets of three, I think here or four sets of three with 455, but where my feet go, there's actually kind of an edge between the rubber and the plywood and my, f it, it was weird. It was like, um, feeling like your foot was getting chopped in half. So it wasn't really optimal for a sumo pull, but you know, it's not always going to be the best, the best possible setup, but you know, the gym was very good, um, overall and, uh, definitely better than probably anywhere else we could have trained. But, uh, you know, we felt relatively good, even though it's, you know, dry and hot and all that sort of stuff. We're used to training in the hot humidity. Uh, but you know, you, you, <laughs> Was it, like I said, haven't been feeling my best the last few weeks. Would I, do I like to train squat bench deadlift two days in a row? No, <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, as we have in our saying in our gym, uh, don't be bitch. <laughs> it always, it always sounds better when you say it in Russian or with a Russian accent. So this is, uh, the very next day. Um, I had to start out in the monolift cause somebody was in the, uh, somebody was in the, using the racks, um, which, you know, I was let them finish and I, I started up. So this was 495 for four sets of five and then an AMRAP. And these actually felt really good. Um, I was pretty happy with how the weight was moving. 
now we're back in the rack. Uh, I felt like I was finally starting to hit my groove. And actually, I think what has started to help is I've gradually been taking in my stance. And I think, I don't think it's narrower than when I was at Raw Nationals. I think after Raw Nationals, for some reason, I started moving my stance out. This happens on occasion. My feet will just somehow start to migrate. I don't know if my brain thinks it's a good idea. Uh, but my feet will start to migrate out and um, I lose a lot of explosiveness out of the bottom of the squat. But these I felt were, were pretty good. You know, I'll always have people tell me, oh, you've got a terrible squat form. You good morning your squats, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I don't know of any good morning where your hips break 90 degrees at your knees or, or your hips break your, your knee and so you're breaking 90 degrees. But um, do I have more forward lean than most people? Yes, but I've kind of discussed why that is. Um, I have very, very long femurs and a short torso, and thus to achieve depth, I have to lean forward. Now, when I get fatigued, do my hips come up first? Yeah, that happens. Uh, you can see it right there a little bit. But typically, my hips, and if you look at my one rep max attempts, my hips and my, my, hips and my chest come up at the same, at the same rate. Um, so I get it. It's a weird looking squat. It's, it's not what you're used to. Uh, if I could squat more upright, believe me, I would. Uh, <laughs> I would love for it to look very pretty. Um, but that's, I would love to look like a Bryce Lewis when I squat. But that's just not my frame. That's not how I'm put together. And the only time I've ever hurt my lower back is trying to force myself to squat more upright. Uh, I took a front on video because I've been favoring my left side. And as you can see here, I'm still kind of favoring that side a little bit. I'm not sure how much of that is, you know, my hip. Uh, if I go back and look at old squat pictures and videos of me, I, I, it looks like I'm always doing that. And I think this is, yeah, this is my AMRAP set here. I ended up getting 10 reps, which is not, not a PR for me. Uh, I think 11 is my PR. Um, and I got 14, obviously, with 480. But again, keep in mind, this is, you know, a day after... Uh, doing quite a bit of squat and deadlift volume as well. So that probably had something to do with it. Um, but the other thing I'm doing too is I felt like these were more quality reps than I was getting on my AMRAPs before. Um, the bar was quieter. Uh, I'm taking more time between reps. I'm separating the reps. I'm not trying to, instead of thinking about, oh my God, I got to get 10, 11, 12 reps. I'm thinking about, okay, let's do this rep right. And then let's do the next rep right. And then let's do the next rep right. But yeah, I mean, as you can see, when I get fatigued, um, my stronger muscles, my glutes, my hamstrings, my lower back start to take over a little bit. Um, that's why it's a max set. Um, you know, you're going to have some form breakdowns. That's part of it. Um, but, you know, I've been doing this for over a decade now. And, you know, I may end up getting a low back injury at some point, but it's certainly not going to be with any more frequency than anyone else who has ever lifted heavy. So, um, you know, I wish I could say, you know, hopefully that will stop people from saying how terrible my squat form is, but I know it won't. Uh, <laughs> I think one of the unfortunate things is uh, people will look at a diagram of how you're supposed to squat and, and just assume everybody should squat that way. And, and the fact of the matter is everybody is different. Everybody's built different, different levers. Okay. I wouldn't tell people, Hey, you've got to squat like me. If you can squat really with a really upright back angle, by all means do that. Uh, absolutely. So, uh, bench press went pretty well. Only got a couple sets there. That's, but it was, uh, five sets of doubles with 285, And I actually felt like I was able to throw, uh, this is, uh, let's see here, four sets of three with 555 and then the AMRAP. So it looks like 595. Looks like I've got uh, six plates on there. But one of those plates is actually a 25 um, because, you know, it looks cooler. So I was really focused. I really, you know, I've really gotten more focused on trying to be more optimal with my deadlift setup. One of the problems I was having here was that my MP3 player, as stupid as it sounds, my MP3 player kept jumping out of the sleeve, um, which was kind of distracting. I think part of that is that the, there's a lot of bounce in the, in the floor there. 
uh, I'm not used to having that much bounce, and that was kind of causing it to jack out of the the, the holder. But overall, these sets felt pretty good. Um, I, I think I'm, you know, I've, I've consciously made an effort not to overdip my hips. Um, I talked about that a while back in my videos. I used to overdip my hips trying to get more quad into the movement. And it ended up that I was putting a lot of slack into the bar and causing myself problems. Here's my one set where I use the hook grip. Uh, causing myself some problems because it would cause to throw me forward because I was putting slack into the bar. But I actually think I've kind of gone too far the one way. I think I'm keeping my hips a little bit higher than they need to be. So I'm going to work on getting my hips down a little bit more. Um, not a ton because you don't want to push the bar away from you with your shins. Um, but I do think I can get them a, l a touch lower. Touch lower. So one of the problems with... Uh, you can see it right there. I kind of had a, a slow off the ground there. I didn't break with my quads. I broke with my lower back. That second one was better. It's always funny how uh, your second deadlift can be much better than your, your first. Here is, um, I figured I'd get a front view. I think this might be the AMRAP set. So we'll find out here in a few, oh yeah, it's definitely the AMRAP set. <laughs> yep, definitely going faster. Uh, one of the other problems was the bar was kind of bouncing all over the place. So I had trouble keeping it in line. Um, you know, my feet were pretty locked in, but the bar kept shifting left and right, left and right. So that made it that made it a little bit difficult, made it a little bit hard to, to get through all the reps. And I only got 10 reps on this, um, which I've done 10 with, or I don't know, if I, got, I think I got 10 or 11, I can't remember. Uh, I, I know, you know, I've done 10 with uh, 580 or 585 before. So this was a little frustrating. Um, but at the same time, you know, I'm fatigued, I'm tired. Uh, done a lot of volume on squat and deadlift in, in two days. So, you know, it's just, you're not going to have your best day every day. That's just, that's, that's just all there is to it. Um, okay, guys, uh, that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. And now here's some Olympia footage.